How do you do valve stem seals? Well, let's go through it. I've got three more left on this head. This is the head off of a Toyota 18R four cylinder. I've still got to do valve stem seals down here. Not because the old ones failed, but because I'm rebuilding the engine and my kit came with new valve stem seals. These look kind of like a top hat, sort of an umbrella style, as opposed to an O-ring style like on my 64 Cadillac, those fast stem seals have failed. So basically it's getting oil from here. We have the camshaft up here and the valve train and all this stuff is getting lubricated by oil. And if the seal fails, it's down in there, then the oil goes down past the seal and where that's where the spark plug is in the combustion chamber so the pistons moving up and down and now oil is getting all over the piston and it's trying to burn the oil with the gasoline and that ends up blowing white smoke out the tailpipe it also will uh, let the combustion gas when this piston comes up and we've got 10 times the compression, you know, uh, 10 times the pressure of atmosphere. So if you have a 10 to one compression ratio, it's squeezing atmosphere air 10 times. And that vapor is escaping past the seal into the valve train, the valve body where the oil is. We've got all these oil passages delivering oil to the moving valve train. But when you have exhaust or uh, combustion gas escaping and pressurizing what's under your valve cover. Oftentimes it also finds its way down into the crankcase, as is the case with this Cadillac. The crankcase is being pressurized and if you rev it up or floor it, it just shoots oil out of the dipstick tube, out of the fill neck, and blows white smoke. So valve stem seals is how you fix that. It could be a couple other things, but a lot of times this is what it is, especially on that category with the O-rings versus the umbrella style. Um, so many heat cycles, they get old, they rot, they crack. So what you need, a valve spring compressing tool. They don't all look just like this, but they all function kind of the same way. Uh, so what we're going to do is put this on a spring, tighten it down, and compress that spring. All right, put my glove on. So you'll notice one side sticks out farther than the other side. This because as the spring coils, it comes up. So it starts down here and comes up, 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 up. So it's going to still, the top of this tool is still going to be even with the top of the spring because one side is higher. Okay. So we're just gonna compress and compress and compress. Until those coils of the spring get pretty close together. And that's going to earn us some movement here. I'm going to tap it with my hammer. Yeah. So now we can get the valve keepers out. So I've got a magnet here. Let's see if that's enough to grab these keepers. Okay, there's one. Let's get the other one out of there. And there's the other one. Don't lose those. If you don't have a magnet, those things can just fly out into your yard and you'll never find them. So here's the spring assembly. This Toyota uses an inner spring and an outer spring. I'm going to leave it on the tool just like this and dip it in the parts washer for a little bit. Here's the old seal. It's a little crunchy. 
you can't even really see the ceiling surface is just covered in goop so what I'm also going to do is push the valve out so I'm going to push this side and we're going to see it pop out here okay so here's our valve set the head down so now I want to clean the spring seat I want to clean the valve valves aren't terribly expensive you'll save a lot of time if you have a new set it takes several minutes to clean one valve with brushes and picks and solvents and things like that so next step let's just clean 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 and we're also going to clean the other side where the valve seats right here so this is your valve seat if you've ever heard someone say you need hardened valve seats for unleaded gas a lot of older cars if you're dealing with you know 50s 60s uh, cars someone might say don't run modern gas you need a lead additive so you don't ruin the valve seats some vehicles started incorporating hardened valve seats in the 60s and 70s by 72 when the government mandated all the EPA stuff um, all the gasoline makers were essentially phasing out leaded gasoline but the seat on a lot of cylinder heads is removable and you can have your machine shop put hardened seats in place so you can run modern gasoline in an old engine but let's get all this stuff cleaned out and then we'll do reassembly and now we've got our stuff relatively clean what we're going to do is uh, first we're going to lube the seal with some oil I've got the bottle cap of an oil bottle just going to put some oil in there I'll make sure we get kind of inside and outside okay just set that down sometimes it helps to have something like a socket to drive that thing down I want to go ahead and oil the valve just put some on there and I'm just gonna let the oil run down the stem for a sec Okay, now let's poke this valve stem through there. And we just want it to seat nicely so there's nothing keeping the valve open. You don't want carbon buildup or a piece of dirt or something that's going to get in the way and keep that valve from closing all the way. Gonna tap this. Now that seal is all the way down. We're gonna put the spring. I've still got my tool on here, it's still compressed. So I should be able to just drop my keepers right in place I know I'm wearing black gloves and we're looking at a black part but you see they're basically two halves of a circle that go together and they have a little ridge in the middle and they go together they basically cup the end of that valve stem and once they lock down in place against the hat of this spring that holds everything together so the spring is basically trying to push the hat up, which is bringing 
the valve with it up to keep it closed and it will not open until the rocker via the cam or push rod or whatever pushes that spring down. Well, let's just go through here and make sure that little ridge is clean. See, dropping them like that, if I were in the grass, I would never find that thing. Also be careful using compressed air like this. If I don't have a good hold of that and that air blows that thing out, it'll be gone for good. Okay. So they're kind of tapered. So they only go in there one way. Okay, there's one. And there's two. And now I can back this compressor off. So it's releasing my compression on that spring. And there we go. So now I've just got two more. Just rinse and repeat. Do the whole thing. And then you should be leak free. I will mention, uh, you don't have to take the head off of the car. If you do it, still in the car on the block, you do have to have a tool. You pull a spark plug out and you thread in an adapter so you can put your air nozzle with a compressor um, into the where the spark plug went and you pressurize the combustion chamber where the piston is so that air is forcing the valve in the closed position so when you pull the keepers out and pull the spring off you don't want that valve just to drop down into the combustion chamber um, if you do drop that thing down in there then you're pulling the head off to get it out <laughs> 